Hello and namaste. I'm Dr. Vivek Basukala. I work at AKB Center for Arthroscopy, Sports Injuries and Regenerative Medicine in Nepal. Today I'm going to talk about a condition that is called ankle instability, uh, which is a very common condition. Almost many of us must have sustained some form of ankle injury, ankle instability in our lifetime. Though it is very much common, it is one of the most ignored and one of the most uh, neglected field in orthopedics. So today I'm going to uh, talk about how to diagnose this uh, ankle instability and how to go into decision making with the use of intraoperative fluoroscopy. So ankle is a synovial joint which has dorsiflexion and plantar flexion movement and uh, ankle joint forms with the help of three bones. Um, the tibia, distal part of the tibia and distal part of the fibula makes a uh, uh, ankle mortis under which the head of the talus is located and thus the ankle joint is formed uh, with only the bony morphology with the bony architecture this ankle is this ankle joint is not so stable joint uh, because of this it is further strengthened by medial and lateral stabilizing static ligaments uh, stabilizing structure the ligaments the medial stabilizing structure is the very robust and strong one which we commonly know as the deltoid ligament with its multiple components and the lateral ligament complex is not so strong ligament as that of the medial side and it is composed of anterior talofibular ligament, uh, calcaneofibular ligament and the posterior talofibular ligament. The anterior talofibular ligament is nothing but the capsular expansor or capsular thickening uh, which goes from anterior part of the fibula and goes and attaches to the anterior part of the neck of the talus. Um, second one is the calcaneofibular ligament. It arises from the distal tip of the posterior distal tip of the uh, fibula and goes underneath the peroneal tendons and uh, is attached to the tubercle of the calcaneum. Then another one is the posterior talofibular ligament, which is the strongest of these two, these three, and uh, only rarely this ligament is injured, and it arises from posterior aspect of the fibula and goes and attaches to the posterior lateral tubercle of the talus. The typical mechanism of ankle injury is when the ankle is dorsiflexed, when the ankle is plantar flexed, and inverted, a hind foot is inverted, and whole of the leg is externally rotated this is very common mechanism of injury whenever we uh, rotate our whole body uh, when the whole body is rotated during sports or whenever we land onto some some uneven grounds this type of mechanism uh, does occur and because of which the ankle is injured in fact the ankle is the joint which is most commonly injured and atfl is most commonly injured ligament in our body and only about 50 to 70 percent of these cases will have concomitant calcaneofibular ligament injury and isolated calcaneofibular ligament is very very uncommon. PTFL that is posterior talofibular ligament is injured in less than 10 percent of cases. What we, we must understand is ATFL is uh, the horizontal structure whenever uh, it is the ankle is plantar flex ATFL becomes vertical and it is it becomes primary stabilizer of ankle in when the plantar when the ankle is plantar flex it is mainly responsible for anterior posterior instability anterior posterior stability of the ankle joint so whenever atfl is injured mainly anterior posterior instability occurs whereas calcaneofibular ligament is vertical when the ankle is dorsiflexed and calcaneofibular ligament gives mainly the mediolateral instability mediolateral stability so it is uh, the mediolateral instability which occurs when there is concomitant calcaneus injury along with the anteroposterior instability because of atfl injury so there is a paper from jordi vega who dissected the lateral ankle structures very nicely and he came up with this beautiful pictures and according to him the ATFL has two bands, the superior bands and inferior band. And inferior band of ATFL is uh, attached with uh, the 
superior part of the calcaneo fibular ligament and it forms a complex and inferior part of the atfl and superior and anterior part of the cfl uh, is connected with the band of fibers which is called rc form fibers and because of these rc form fibers inferior part of the atfl and uh, cfl work in combined and these whenever these inferior part of the ligament is injured then patient will present with the frank instability whereas the superior part of the atfl is injured in many of the cases of ankle injuries and it does not um, give rise to frank instability but a sort of functional instability so it gave rise to a concept of micro instability so whenever we talk about con ankle instability we have to talk about two types of instability one is functional instability another is mechanical instability in functional instability what happens is there is no demonstrable instability or laxity on stress x-rays or on clinical examination but the patient will have recurrent history of ankle sprain anterolateral ankle pain swelling around the ankle and patient will have some form of giving away sensation uh, whenever some inversion injuries occurs recurs but uh, it is uh, this is because of micro instability because of injury to superior band of the atfl but whenever inferior band of atfl is injured it invariably have some um, some some uh, uh, injury towards the cfl because of these rc from con uh, communication between these two ligament and then the frank mechanical instability which is demonstrable by clinical examination and x-rays will be seen this is uh, this jody vega paper is very important and it is a very interesting read and i advise everyone to go and read this paper and see the concept of micro instability so the diagnosis is at first we should have good clinical history number of this number of injuries that has occurred number of ankle sprain that has occurred the pain the location of pain the swelling location of swelling everything has to be first sorted out then clinical examination the anterior drawer test and medial lateral valgus where inversion and eversion tests are very important to diagnose in ankle instability then uh, plain x-rays MRI and every all sort of investigations are important. This is how uh, we do anterior drawer test. We keep the ankle in neutral uh, position and uh, keep uh, translate the whole of the ankle uh, foot ankle foot complex uh, on stable leg. So uh, the comparison of this translation with other side uh, will will be a deciding factor. So there has been many papers that has been published about the use of ankle stress radiography in chronic lateral ankle instability so <clears throat> uh, just like a pcl tear in knee uh, what happens is in chronic pcl injuries because uh, pcl tends to heal on itself uh, heal by itself uh, the mri in chronic pcl tear may look normal but uh, the stress x-rays and the clinical examination is uh, the deciding factor on whether the patient to be operated or managed conservatively similarly the lateral ligament complex of the ankle joint also heals on itself but what happens uh, whether it heals or not heals it is the demonstrable laxity or demonstrable ankle instability which will decide the treatment paradigm uh, in this particular uh, particular condition so ultrasonography and stress radiographs are better investigation modality and mri may be negative in chronic injury so these are the uh, take home points from these papers so let us see this animation how uh, ligament ligaments are injured and how uh, the healing takes place and how these particular healing will lead to chronic ankle instability so this is the medial and lateral ligamentous structure that is stabilizing this ankle joint. So whenever there is inversion stress to the hind foot, what happens is these lateral ligaments are stressed. And if it goes back to normal, if it goes if the talus goes back to its original position uh, without completely tearing these ligaments and with some sort of conservative management, 
if the environment is given to heal these ligaments so nicely what happens uh, these ligaments uh, go back to its normal shape and size and function in due course of time but what happens is when this inversion stress is so much that the it is so much that these ligaments will be torn these ligaments are torn what happens is uh, there may be um, there may be two results one once the talus goes back to its original uh, mortis what happens is these torn ligaments um, the edges of torn ligaments come to lie side by side so if you treat this patient nicely by immobilization and uh, further if you treat this patient conservatively and the environment to heal is given to these ligaments these ligaments will heal otherwise what happens sometimes if the continuous motion is allowed uh, when the ligaments are healing these ligaments will heal but these ligaments heal in lengthened position they, they, should, they will be longer than its original length what happens is in these conditions now there will be uh, the sensation of instability or there will demonstrable mechanical instability despite the ligaments are healed so this will lead to chronic lateral ankle instability and this is most common condition how the patient will present to us in our clinics uh, with the chronic lateral ankle instability so this is how we do uh, the stress radiographs in our uh, in our setup so it is uh, mandatory to take the patient to OR, uh, not uh, patient not anesthetized, and we do mediolateral uh, varus and uh, inversion and eversion uh, stress to the ankle joint and see the lateral talar tilt and anteroposterior ankle instability be, um, by doing the anterior drawer test. So, uh, talar tilt more than 9 degree and anteroposterior posterior shift more than 10 mm is diagnostic uh, for uh, in our setup so this is how these ankle instability looks like the mediolateral instability the lateral instability you can see the talar tilt more than 9 degree and this is anteroposterior posterior uh, translation of the uh, ankle joint the posterior leap of the distance between posterior leap of the uh, tibia and uh, anterior joint the most posterior point of the uh, joint of the most posterior joint line joint point of the talus uh, is measured and if it is more than 10 millimeter by um, when when the anterior drawer position is maintained then the there is significant ankle instability so the advantage of this stress x-ray is not only in diagnosing but uh, on table you can diagnose and you can confirm that your surgery has done well these two x-rays the superior two x-rays are the x-rays pre and post uh, operative the pre-operative shows good lateral opening but uh, the another one shows no lateral opening it is after the bostrom procedure similarly similarly uh, the inferior one is the anteroposterior instability uh, pre-op and post-op so after a bostrom procedure both of these has been uh, restored to normal. So, take home message is chronic lateral instability is commonly ignored and neglected condition in our setting, though it is very common. Chronic lateral ligament complex tear may not be picked up by MRI, mainly the superior fascicle tear, and even in chronic tear, uh, MRI may look normal. And mechanical instability can be assessed with dynamic stress exercise and clinical examination, not by MRI. And dynamic stress x-rays are easy, econom easy and economical method to quantify the real-time instability. Thank you so much.